Hello? Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, good afternoon to everybody. Welcome again to Pero Resto. We are here again, like some afternoons we are doing every week. And today we are in the last live that we are going to do this season. So the next one is going to be in September. And I had the pleasure to be here my last live with Professor Angelo Cardarelli. Uh, first of all, what we are going to do like with every speaker is to introduce him. Uh, let's say before that, to be honest, um, I'm really, really happy to, to talk with him because we didn't know each other before and what I was seeing, all the cases that he has, all the curriculum that he has, uh, I have to say that it's really, really a pleasure to be with you, doctor. So... I agree. Uh, Thank you for the kind invitation. It's a pleasure for us. So, uh, Dr. and Professor Angelo, Cardarelli, uh, he studied at Aquila University. Uh, you can try to admit me to me oh, if I, I am wrong, okay? You know, sometimes uh, you see many, many curriculums and, and you can be wrong all of them. So then he specialized in oral surgery at Sapienza University. Uh, he has, uh, right now, he works every day at his private clinic with also with his family at Cardarelli Private Clinic at the south of Italy. And he's a young professor and also is scientific uh, advisor at San Rafael Hospital. So, uh, and after doing this kind introduction, yes, I led to you to talk. Uh, we are going to talk today about the piezo. Uh, he will focus uh, on empathic canines and he will show to us all the advantages and all the benefits that this tool can have, uh, not only for, for this treatment, which is really, really nice, but also for the the every day in, in our practice uh, and you will see all the benefits and all the what you can get with this so professor all for thank you. you very much and uh, welcome everyone and thanks again antonio for the great presentation and i'm very happy to see you finally <laughs> and i hope to meet you in spain very soon after this particular and critical period about coronavirus. We will try it. Yeah, and uh, thanks again, uh, Pedro Resto, for having me today. And I'm very glad to spend some of my time with all of you talking about a very interesting topic, a new approach, a new minimal invasive approach in the treatment of the impacted people using a particular device, the piezo device, and using this device, it's possible to reduce the invasivity, to reduce the morbidity for our patient, also in the extraction surgery. So I think it's very important to have and to perform a good solution and a good technique to obtain the same outcomes, reducing the risks and the reducing the problems for our country. So now I will uh, share my lecture about that. And uh, as you can see, the topic is the piezo surgery on treatment of impacted teeth. So, first of all, before we start, I'd like to introduce uh, myself. I come from a small town in the south of Italy, Zernia, where I work with my brother and my father in my private clinic, Clinica Cardarelli, as you can see. And I have a dedicated room for oral surgery and for implant surgery, because I think it's very important, as you will see later during the lecture, to have a dedicated 
environment, a dedicated uh, structure, a dedicated room for the oral surgery. And also, we have another fifth floor for the pediatric dentistry, and I think it's very important to have a multidisciplinary approach in our work, in our approach. And also, I spent some of my time in Milan as a, a scientific advisor and as adjunct professor. This is my teamwork. And a few years ago, I was with the ideator of the All on Four concept, Professor Paul Malo. And also, I am very glad to be one of the members of the International Extraction Academy of California. So uh, now uh, we can start, and I'd like to show this emblematic picture. In fact, in uh, this day, I removed more than 15 wisdom teeth with the minimal invasive approach using piezosurgery device. So the extraction is my passion, is my uh, best topic. And for this reason, as you will see later, a few months ago, a uh, few months ago, uh, came out in Italy the, my test book about this topic. So as you can see, the uh, eruption of the dental elements represent a complex, a complex series of uh, genetical control events. And during this period, it's possible to have some problems during the eruption of the dental elements. In fact, according to the epidemiological study, the incidence of the inclusion is about 20%, with a predilection for women. And also, the lower third molar is the dental elements that more frequently appears in inclusion, appears infected, followed by the lower third molar, sorry, the uh, upper third molar, the upper canin, the lower canin, and followed by the other dental elements. So the wisdom tip is our topic, is the uh, most common included and uh, which are the factors that can cause the inclusion of the dental elements so we have uh, local factors and the systemic factors for example the extraction of the chicus teeth decay of the chicus teeth so we have a no urgent space and it's not possible to complete the eruption in the arch, in the mandible, or in the maxilla. Ankylosis or alteration of the follicle. And also, we have a systemic factor that can cause the inclusion. As you can see, we have many systemic diseases. One of that is the dysplasia quadroclanica. As you can see from this clinical case about a very young patient, as you can see from the OPG, we have hyperplasia, sural numerary fit, lesion in the mandible and in the maxilla. So in this case, it's very important to follow a multidisciplinary approach. And this is the CBCT reconstruction which shows the alteration of the dental elements in this particular patient. So in this patient, it's very important to follow the correct approach. So we will extract the dental elements, the sural numerality, and after the development, it's possible to place also the implant. So this is the resume about the incidence of the infective teeth, and the wisdom teeth is the most frequent impacted dental element. And in this approach, it's very important 
to have a good knowledge about the anatomy, about the diagnosis, about the X-ray diagnosis. As you can see from this case, for example, we have a uh, lower third molar in vertical position. And as you can see from this X-ray, we have a close contact between the roots and the alveolar canal. And also after the extraction, it's possible to see the very extreme, very particular shape of these roots. So in this case, it's not possible to remove these dental elements without the section of the roots. So for this reason, it's very important to see the X-ray and to know the anatomy and to know the relationship between the impacted and the anatomical structure like for example alveolar canal in the mandible or maxillary sinus in the upper jaw because about the wisdom teeth we have a very variable anatomy as you can see three different wisdom teeth Lower, lower with the three roots and so, sorry, upper and lower to the molar with different roots and different shapes. Another typical case about the upper to the molars. So as you can see, in this upper third molars, we have a very complex anatomy, very particular shape. So in this case, it's very important to perform and to use a correct technique to avoid the fracture of the apex and to avoid the fracture of the bone around the dental level, especially in the posterior side of the maxilla, where the quality of the bone is very lower. So in this case, the use of the piezosurgery device can help in the reduction of the eventual risks during and after our surgery, according to the particular shape of these dental elements. And these are the steps about the surgical approach in impacted teeth surgery. The fifth step is the anesthesia. It's very important, the anesthesia, to reduce the pain for our patient and to increase the confidence by our patient. And for this reason, I will see later, in many cases, I use always the conscious sedation. The second step is the flap, and it's very important to choose a correct flaps design, as you will see later. In many cases, I need to perform the cut of the bone and the cut of the crown and the roots of the impacted teeth, according always the anatomy, the shape of the impacted dental elements. And the last step is the suture. It's very important, this step, to allow a good closure of the flap, the primary closure of the flap. About the uh, anesthesia, in my practice, uh, uh, according to the treatment of the lower third molar, I use always the metribacaine with the phenethrine for the block of the, to block the alveolar nerve on the spike spine, as you will see later. And I use the metribacaine also in the fornix on the buccal nerve to reduce the pain during our surgery. And with my colleague, I made a particular protocol for the patient with some allergy using the, the cortisol, using the antihistaminic to reduce the possibility to have the allergy, especially in the pediatric patient. 
with different dosage in the pediatric and in adult patients. So I think it's very important to use this protocol in the pediatric patient three, day, three days before our surgery with the steroid, anastaminic, and gas. About the use of the articaine, we have many studies about this comparison. But we have many differences between the articaine and the mepivacaine. But in my practice, I prefer the use of the mepivacaine because when I use it, uh, the articaine in the extraction with impacted teeth, I noted more pain during the injection and also more ischemia around the soft tissue. So for, for these reasons, I prefer always the use of the mepivacaine. And this is our surgical view about the lower tip molar. In the thickness of the cheek, we have the path of the facial artery. In the interior border of the mandible, the spike spine, the buccal nerve, and in the lingual side, the lingual nerve. For this reason, it is very important to choose a correct flaps design to avoid the injury of the lingual nerve in this side. As you will see later, I will use always the same flap in this approach, the triangular flap. And this is the schematization about the speak spine, about the path of the lingual nerve. So it's possible to use the direct technique or indirect technique using a medium needle or a long needle. In my experience and in my practice, I use always the direct technique with the medium needle, as you will see later. This is the indirect technique using a long side needle on the spike spine. And we have different barrels, different color, red color epine uh, with the epinephrine, without the epinephrine, and yellow color. This is the Ubistein, this is the Articaine. Two different types of needle, medium sides and long sides. In my hands, I use always the medium sides. As you can see in this picture on the left, this is the direct technique using the Mepivacaine without epinephrine at the fifth time, using the direct technique with the medium needle in the corner of the mouth in the opposite direction to perform the block on the speak spine with this approach instead on the right this is the indirect technique and after the fifth step i use always the second anesthesia on the buccal nerve in this case i use always mepivacaine with the penetrin to reduce also the uh, bleeding during the surgery. And uh, instead, in the maxilla, I used the, the uh, mepivacaine with the epinephrine on the emergence of the palatine uh, nerve in the posterior side of the maxilla and in the anterior side in the nasopalatine canal. It's very important to perform this anesthesia on the maxilla. For example, during the extraction of the impacted teeth in the maxilla with palatal approach. Because when it's possible, according to the CBCT view, the CBCT reconstruction, I prefer always the palatal approach in the maxilla to preserve, sorry, to preserve the buccal bone, always. And this is the anesthesia, for example, in the fornix during the implant placement, very easy and simple technique. And in extreme case, in some cases, it's possible to perform the extra oral anesthesia on the emergence of the infraorbitary nerve and another type of anesthesia, for example, about soft tissue, about the uh, treatment of the lesion of the soft tissue of the lips, for example, in this case, the treatment about the uh, treatment of the fibroma on the 
uh, on the soft tissue on the lips. In this case, I performed a very lesion anesthesia using mepibetain with adrenaline. But it's very important, as I spoke before, the use of the cautious edition, as you can see from this short video. Because using the conscious station, it's possible to reduce the anxiety, to increase the compliance by our patient, and also it's possible to reduce the blood pressure and reduce the bleeding during the surgery, and also it's possible to inject the uh, steroid, four milligrams of steroid before the surgery, and four milligrams immediately after to reduce the edema and to reduce the swelling. Obviously, according to the health condition of our patient. So I use this type of the sedation, especially in the pediatric patient and also in the treatment of the uh, edentulus jaws with immediate load. I need to have some uh, uh, tools, some device for this type of anesthesia, the uh, multi uh, life monitor to check the heart activity, to check the saturation, to check the blood pressure, and we use the benzodiazepine to reduce the anxiety for our patient. And also it's possible to use another device for the, uh, to check the saturation and to check the air. In this surgery, but I think it's very important in all type of surgery, it's very important to have a dedicated instrument to perform our surgery, to follow always the same protocol. Because I think it's very important to follow the right protocol and the same protocol in different clinical cases. I will use always the same protocol according to this particular approach. For example, for this uh, surgery, I need to have the syringe for the anesthesia, the scalpel, the blade the needle holder for the suture, typical instruments. But it's very important to see the ergonomical approach, the use of these instruments. As you can see by the, this picture, the use of the retractor for the tongs, the retractors for the cheek to perform a good surgical approach and to achieve a good surgical the same approach on the right in this picture. Different type of periostale, mouth, preacher, two different type of the uh, clamps, medium and long sides, the hemostatic clamps, and I think it's very important to have the retractors to protect the flap, to protect the bustle, to hold the flap during the surgery, as you will see later. We have two different types of retractors for the mandible and for the upper molars, for the maxilla, the retractor for the tongues and the bite block to open the mouth, especially in the patient, in the pediatric patient and in the patient with a low Compliance. This is the correct approach and the correct use of these instruments from the right to the left. In this case, I use it always, also in this case, the triangular flap. And using these retractors, it's possible to hold the flap and to protect the flap. Because in the thickness of the cheek, we have the facial artery, so it's very important to avoid the injury of this artery. On the lingual side, I use always the tongue retractor to protect the tongue. The same approach in this, in other case, 
two retractor in anterior position and the posterior position to achieve a good surgical view and to protect the flap. And the same in another case. Same approach and same protocol. The instruments for the suction, medium sides and the small sides. This device is very important, for example, during the extraction of the apex, because using this device, it's possible to obtain a good surgical view and a very precise suction. Also, I think it's very important the use of this device in the GPR to avoid the suction of the bone chips during the bone regeneration. We have also different type of the luxator, straight and uh, angulated, straight, medium sides, large sides, the bone clamps. I use always the bone clamp to remove the bone, to, to, remove, to remove the soft tissue residual in the cavity. As you will see later, the S-shaped luxator and the luxator for the apex, straight and angulated luxator. The correct use of the luxator, for example, on the right, the use of the angulated luxator to remove the distal part of the impacted tape. Another case, the use of the straight luxator and the use in the horizontal impacted tooth approach the use of the S-shaped luxator. We have also a different type of the, of the forceps for the uh, lower to the molar, the upper to the molar for the apex and the Lucas spread to remove and to clean the cavity after the extraction. For example, the correct use of the forceps in the approach of the lower to the molar, using always the retractors to protect and to hold the flap, especially during the use of the straightened piece and the use especially during the use of the drills and the bands. The sizer for the suture, the straightened piece, and the turbine to perform the section of the crown and the roots during the surgery. Different type of the barns, ball shape, and a particular type made in ceramic to reduce the vibration on the bone during the uh, ostectomy, for example, the use of the turbine to perform the cut of the crown after the ostectomy, the use of the straightened piece to perform the ostectomy, for example, during the germectomy. But as you can see, in, in these different cases, I use all I use always the same approach and the same ergonomical approach to achieve a good surgical view and to reduce the risk and to reduce the post-op problems for our patient. And for this reason, I made the first kit for this type of surgery. It's divided in two sets, which you can find all instruments dedicated for this surgery. In fellowship with a very important German company, Justomed, and we have all instruments and we have also a new device in this kit, a new forceps for the removal of the roots and apex in the approach of the lower third molar, as you will see later. And about the flap, as I spoke before, I use always the same flap for this surgery, the triangular flap with the one horizontal incision between, in the case of the lower to the molar, between the papilla uh, from the, uh, uh, the fist and the second molar, and the one vertical distal incision with the vestibular approach to avoid the lingual nerve, the injury of the lingual nerve. And this is the schematization about the use of this flap in the approach of the lower third the molar. One horizontal incision between the fist, between the papilla 
of the first and the second molar and the one vertical distal incision to perform and to obtain this triangular flat. This is the occlusal view, and as you can see, using this shape, it's possible to avoid the injury of the lingual nerve. So after it's possible to disconnect and to reflect the flap to achieve a good surgical view and after to perform the ostectomy if necessary. The same flap also it's possible the, to use the same flap in the maxilla, for example, one vertical and one horizontal incision. So it's also, it's easy to perform the suture at the end of the surgery. And this is the same flap that I use always, for example, during the lateral approach of the maxillary sinus. This is the triangular flap, one horizontal and one vertical incision. So also in this approach, using this flap, it's possible to achieve a good surgical view and to perform a very safe and easy procedure. This is the exact approach to perform this flap, as you can see on the left in this picture. This is the first incision, the horizontal incision between the first and second molar, the papilla of the first and the second molar, intrasurcular incision and one vertical vestibular incision with this shape to preserve the lingual nerve. As you can see from this drawing, this is the schematization about this triangular flap. Because according to the study, according to the, liter the literature, in 14% of the patient, it's possible to have this shape of the lingual nerve. So in this case, it's very dangerous, the use of the lingual flap, because in this case, the emergence of the lingual nerve is very superficial. So I need to respect the vestibular approach. But likely in 86%, we have this, pet of the lingual nerve. And also, as you can see from this cadaver dissection, the diameter of the lingual nerve is very, very important about the dimensions. Another cadaver dissection to shows the emergence of the lingual nerve as you can see. So in this case, it's very important the use of the preacher, the periosteal, to protect the nerve with the full thickness approach because the nerve is included in the thickness of the lingual nerve. So in the extraction surgery, obviously, we will use always the full thickness approach to perform the surgery. From the east case until to the complex case, always full thickness. And now I will introduce this device that can help in this approach, not only in the extraction, but as you will see later, in many surgical approaches. This is the piezo-surgery device, and we have many and different type of tips with the different shape, with the sharp shape, as you can see from this picture. And for example, I use always these tips for the extraction, as you will see later during, uh, the, uh, during my lecture because I will show some clinical case about the use of the piezo device. 
In this case, for example, I performed the ostectomy using only the piezosurgery device to avoid the use of the straightened piece to reduce the bone ostectomy and also to reduce the invasivity, to reduce the edema and to reduce the swelling after our surgery. Also in this case, as you can see on the right picture, we have the same approach, two retractors to protect and to hold the flap and the use of the piezosurgery device to perform the ostectomy around the crown. And if necessary, I will use the turbine or the straightened piece to perform the cut of the crown. And if necessary, later, I perform also the cut of the roots and I remove the roots. According to the anatomy of the dental lens, the use of the piezosurgery device during the obstetomy, for example, as you can see from this short video, Using these tips, for example, this insert, it's possible to perform a very micrometric and very minimal invasive cut around the crown of the, this dental element. Now we have a sufficient space between the crown and the bone, and after I cut the the distal part on the, the crown, and I removed the dental elements. So, using the piezosurgery device, it's possible to reduce, as you can see, this is one of the advantages about the use of the piezosurgery device, instead of the use of the straight end piece. The micrometric cut, and is very important, because if I will have a micrometric cut, I will have also a very minimal edema, minimal swelling after the surgery. And also we have a good healing of the soft tissue, as you will see later. And now I will show uh, one of, the, of uh, my clinical case. If you have any question, please, Antonio, feel free. Don't worry. Uh, no, right now, right now, everything, I think that is okay. Uh, I think that is really illustrative to show all the steps that you do in your everyday practice for the removal of the impacted pit. So, yeah, let's go on. Okay. So, now I will show the uh, correct uh, approach in this case about the impacted pit removal. This is the uh, surgical kit about the impacted teeth and now we have the situation at the beginning we have a lower third molar in this position and this is the initial situation okay so after the anesthesia i performed the our triangular flap one horizontal incision to preserve the papilla and one vertical distal incision to preserve the lingual side and to avoid the injury of the lingual nerve, as you can see. The use of the retractors, and then it's possible to reflect the flap, full thickness flap, and then I use it directly the piezosurgery insert to perform the ostectomy, as you can see surrounding the crown and also as you can see using its pot using the, this insert it's possible to perform the ostectomy also deeper and it's very important to remove easier this lower with more now we have a sufficient space. So, according to the X-ray pre-op, I use the turbine and a dedicated barns to cut the roots at the crown. At the same time, this is the cut, okay? And then I use a 
particular luxator S shaped to perform the count and to remove the distal part of the roots and the crown before. And now I use the new forceps with the particular shape for the lower tip the molar. And now it's possible to remove the major part of the, uh, of the dental element using this device. Okay. I using a saline irrigation to remove the residual part of the dental elements of the soft tissue in the cavity. And as you can see, it's possible to uh, look to see the conceptum between the roots. So in this case, it's not possible to remove this dental element without the section of the roots. And it's very important. So for this reason, it's very important to see before with high attention the X-ray for stop. And if necessary, I will prescribe also the CBCT reconstruction. Not because I will change my, my approach, but also for medical legal point of view. Because my approach is the same. And I filled the cavity always using a collagen, as you can see, for the hemostatic reason and also to obtain a good plane to perform the suture. Then, using this flap, it's possible to obtain a good primary climb of the, this flap without tension, as you can see. So, I used only four single nodes, interrupted suture. And in 99%, I never use the suture in this side on the patina because. It is the best way to reduce the edema and the lipids during the healing. So I never use the suture at the base of the body in 99% of my cases. So using the piezo-surgery device, it's possible to, uh, to use this ultrasound, as you can see particular ultrasound and using this ultrasound, ultra vibration, micro vibration, it's possible to achieve this important clinical outcomes. Micrometric cut, selective cut, and the reduction of the bleeding during the surgery. And it's very important, this last aspect, to achieve a good surgical view. Because using the piezo device, it's possible to use these physical characteristics, physical uh, aspects, micro vibration, hammering action, and cavitation. So, using a micrometric cut, it's possible to achieve a great precision during the cut, during the ostectomy. Also, with selective cut, it's possible to perform our surgery in the particular anatomical risk, in a particular anatomical site with high risk. For example, alveolar nerve in the mandible and the uh, sinus membrane in the maxilla, and also using the saline irrigation during the uh, Ostectum during the use of the insect, it's possible to reduce the bleeding. This is the consequence of the cavitation effect. So, this is the physical characteristics about the piezo-surgery device, the micro vibration, and the amory action using two different types of the ultrasonic uh, waves. It's possible also to clean the surface of the insect by the bone chips during the cut. And also with amelie anchor, it's possible to avoid the 
the increments of the temperature during the use of this insect. And using the cavitation effect, it's possible to reduce the bleeding and to achieve a good surgical view. And have a look at this different approach in the same case. In the, uh, this picture above, it's possible to see the uh, ostectomy with straight and piece with traditional piece. And this is the histological result. And as you can see, we have a very important, uh, very important necrosis area along the, the bone cut. As you can see, instead the same case, but using the piezosurgery insert, as you can see for the exectomy, we we obtain a different histological result. As you can see, very minimal necrosis area along the cut. So for this reason, using the piezosurgery device, it's possible to increase the healing of the bone and of the soft tissue, not only in the extraction, but also in the implant placement. And have a look to different cases using on the left, the straightened piece and on the right, the piezosurgery device. Same ergonomical approach, but using two different devices. Traditional technique using straightened piece and the new approach, new minimal invasive approach using piezosurgery device. And we have a very important difference. As you can see, using the straightened piece we have a very big and important ostectomy. As you can see, instead of using the piezosurgery device, we have a very micrometric and a small ostectomy. But, as you can see in this video, the use of the uh, Using of uh, the straightened piece, it's possible to work quickly. Instead, using the pedosurgery device, it's not possible to work quickly. This is the only, I think, this is the only disadvantage about the use of the pedosurgery device. But we have many, many advantages. Because using the pedosurgery device, device I need to use a very uh, a very low minimal pressure on the head of the piezosurgery device. In fact, for example, using the straightened piece, I need to use the high pressure, high power on the head of the straightened piece, about two, three kilograms instead. Using the piezosurgery device, I need to use only 500 grips on the head of the of the uh, piezosurgery device. Another clinical case, for example, different clinical case, but the same approach. This is the clinical situation, the initial clinical situation at the beginning. We haven't the relationship between the roots and the canal. So in this case, I didn't use the CBCT reconstruction, the use of the retractus, and this is the same triangular flat, one horizontal and one vertical incision, two retractor to hold and to protect the flap, and one retractor to protect the top. I use it also in this case directly, only the piezosurgery insert to perform the ostectomy, very micrometric cut, and after I perform the cut of the distal part of the crown to remove the dental elements using the S shape luxator, the residual alveolar cavity. I filled the uh, cavity with the collagen and I use only four interrupted nodes. And as you can see, after the extraction, after the removal of the distal part of the crown, it's possible to remove 
with the easy and the safe approach, the dental element, the impacted dental element, all together. And now I will show another case, another extreme case about the treatment of a large and a big odontoma in close contact with the nerve and with the impacted lower molar. So very extreme case, and as you can see, as you will see later, using the pitocardial device, especially in this extreme case, in very young patient, in fact, the patient has 15 years old, it's possible to reduce invasivity and to preserve the mental and the alveolar nerve. The extreme case, this is the CBCT reconstruction to show the relationship between the impacted lower molar and the big odontoma in the angle of the mandible. So this is a critical situation because the odontoma is in the very critical part of the mandible, in the angle of the mandible. So in this case, it's possible, it, I need to perform a very minimal invasive approach to avoid the fracture of the angle of the mandible. This is the initial situation. In this case, uh, I used another, another flaps, uh, trapezoidal flap with the two vertical incisions to increase the visibility and to increase the surgical view in this particular case. So I performed the one vertical incision to avoid, to respect the emergence of the mental nerve and the one distal incision. This is the situation after the skeletalization and this is the emergence of the mental nerve. So I need to avoid the injury of the mental nerve and I choose this flap, this shape. So I started with the ostectomy using the another uh, uh, insert with the sharp shape to perform this cut. And as you can see, it's possible to perform a very minimal invasive, a very micrometric cut. I performed the bone block. And after I removed this bone block, and below we have the large and big odontoma, as you can see. Now I need, sorry, 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 sorry. Now I need to cut the odontoma using the same insert because it's not possible to remove all together the odontoma to avoid the fracture of the mandible. So using the same insert, I cut the odontoma in different small parts. as you can see, and I removed single parts, each parts using, for example, the hemostatic clamps, very hard tissue. This residual part of the odontoma, I removed the odontoma, the residual cavity, and now I need to remove the impacted lower molar in the close contact with the mental nerve. So using this device, it's possible to perform a very minimal invasive approach in this part and to avoid the injury of the mental nerve. 
In this case, I cut the crown and I cut the, also the roots, as you can see, to remove with the minimal invasive approach and with the easy and safe approach, the dental elements. I filled also in this case the cavity with sponge collagen and I performed my suture. Single nodes in the vertical incision and horizontal mattress in the posterior area to avoid the invagination of the soft tissue in the residual herbal cavity. The X ray was stopped after the odontoma removal and the healing of the soft tissue two weeks later. So I think, especially in this case, in the extreme case, the use of a particular device that can help us to reduce the invasivity, I think, is the best choice for our surgical approach. And uh, we have many publications about the comparison between the piezoelectric surgery and the traditional drills. This is my publication, for example. And as I spoke before, using the piezo surgery device, we have a, uh, a reduction of the pain, of the trismus, of the swelling. The only disadvantage, this is the surgery and the surgery time. Another publication about the same approach and the resume about the advantages and disadvantage using the straightened piece and using the piezo surgery device. The only disadvantage is the surgery time, but I think it's not important for the our practice. And I will show the last case about the surgical treatment of the uh, small lesion in the palate. As you can see, I performed my anesthesia in the emergence of the nasopalatal canal, as you can see. This is the CBCT reconstruction to show the exact position of the lesion. So in this case, I used the, the another flaps design, the envelope flap without vertical incision, with the intracircular incision, full thickness flap always. And I use it in this case always the suture to hold the flap, as you can see. And I used another insert that with the diamond shape to perform the ostectomy, a small ostectomy, and then I removed the lesion with very minimal invasive and atraumatic approach. lesion then I removed the residual parts of the bone using the saline irrigation and the filter cavity with the collagen the same approach always and I use it as single nodes an interrupted suture to close our So we have many applications about the use of the piezo surgery device. And for this reason, we have also many type of the insert. For example, for the ostectomy, for the extraction, for the implant placement, for the bone split, for the uh, extraction again, for the implant site preparation, for the maxillary sinus lift, for the removal of the... Uh, implant broken and these are the insert about the uh, extraction surgery 
in this particular shape, I use it always the same means for the extraction. The AX1, the ball shape, the diamond shape, the insert with the sharp shape for the ostectum, especially in the lower third molar. And another particular shape. Using this insect, it's possible to perform a good ostectomy and to recover the bone chips during the ostectomy. For example, during the post extraction uh, surgery, it's possible to uh, recover the bone chips to fill the cavity for the socket preservation, for example. And at the end of my lecture, I will show the exact use of the piezo-surgery insert for the extraction. As you can see from this drawing, using the piezo-surgery insert in the close contact between the dental element and the bone, it's possible to preserve the bone and to obtain a good space to remove dental elements. And this aspect is very important, for example, in the case of the port, the immediate post extractive implants. Because using this approach, it's possible to preserve the critical tactical bone. Because, as we know, the critical site in the after the extraction is the buccal bone. Because after the extraction, we have a bone resorption about the vestibular bone, about the buccal bone. So using this insect, it's possible to prevent, it's possible to reduce the bone resorption in the buccal side and the vestibular side. And it's possible to place at the same time the implant in the residual alveolar cavity. And also, I use it frequently, the insert, the piezosurgery insert, to prepare the implant side. So at the end of the, my lecture, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce my new test book in uh, collaboration with the Dr. Arungarg from Miami. Dr. Arungarg is the president of the International Dental Implant Academy, one of the largest academy in the world uh, about the implant uh, education. And this is one of the best former in the US. And uh, this book just came out in Italy a few months ago, but it will be available in July also in the English version. And uh, uh, you can find all the details about this new approach, about the surgical treatment of all impacted dental elements. So uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. And uh, if you have any question, please uh, be free. So Dr. Angelo, thank you so much for, for this presentation. I think that uh, all the people who watch this presentation can admire all the cases that you have shown uh, with the structure not only just teeth but also some lesions that you can have in the in our practice and how with this really useful tool you can avoid to damage and to preserve all the tissues that you want to preserve yeah because finally uh, with, uh, whenever you want to to do an extraction or of a, of a tooth or a lesion what you want to have is a clear vision and also a good hemostasis uh, uh, to to have a good sensitivity when when you are doing this and to to be uh, because uh, what you wanna be is to be careful so you don't wanna damage the nerve or, or to make any injury yeah. and finally also uh, as you know uh, the the healing when you compare the the birth uh, with the piezo, the healing is being faster, and also the the availability of the bone cells is better. So uh, finally, the, the only the only let's say disadvantage it has to be the time, right? 
Yeah. Because the, the, yeah, it, it takes a little bit more. So it's the, the only disadvantage. But when, when you have to do something and you have to be careful, and also with the speculations that you have uh, shown to us in your presentation, uh, finally, the, it's a really good tool for us. So it was really, really nice to, to see everything. And what I have to say is to thank you. You are really welcome to, to be with us here for courses in Spain and, and here in Peru Resto. And uh, well, uh, for the rest of the people who watch everything, uh, we had to say from all the group, thank you so much. Uh, with him, we finish this season and uh, we will start again in September with many, many good professionals from all around the world. So just stay tuned and, and well, if you need something, if you want to participate, just send us a message and we will try to manage. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Angelo. Uh, see you soon and see you soon to everybody. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> you too. <laughs>